Thank you for being here. So Jacksonville has traditionally been a welcoming city for refugees, has had a lot of successful programs in the past to integrate newcomers. What interactions have you had with the organization, with recent immigrants in the area? Um, what is the situation currently that LSS is managing? Yeah, so we are serving a lot of people, way more than we have the past few years. This year, we're projected to have over 500 arrivals in our resettlement program that we receive refugees from the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program from. Uh, last year, we served over 2,500 uh, refugees, asylees, Cuban and Haitian entrants. Um, and so we are going to serve that much this year and even more. So we're really excited. Um, but that does require more assistance from our community. And we've been really fortunate to see our community um, just be very welcoming to the people who are settling, um, very generous in donating in kind items or, or money, spending their time with our programs and with our clients. So we're really thankful to be in a city like that because it's not like that everywhere. So what are the core services that LSS provides to, to newcomers? Yeah, so those traveling through the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program have an intensive 90-day program that they're in where we basically give them a tutorial of how to live in the United States and, and we how to be self-sufficient. So we put them in housing, we get them employed, uh, we enroll their children in school, set them up with benefits, help them navigate the healthcare system. We do cultural orientation, which is like a crash course to living in the United States. Um, and then we just uh, help them navigate the community and know the different resources available to them. And then after 90 days, they have up to five years to come back for other services like youth and mentoring. We have career laddering where they can go to certificate programs. They can um, uh, try to ladder up in their job that they have or get a new job. Uh, we help them get their green card or even citizenship at five years. And so there's a lot. And we also have English that they can attend for free up to five years. And even if they test higher than our classes, they can go to FSCJ. And it's a tough transition a lot of times. People sometimes leaving uh, their countries, um, working as professional people in their countries, you know, doctors in other capacities, and then coming to an environment where they don't speak the language and they are not certified in that same field. How do you help people adjust to maybe not being able to work in the field that they have trained in? Yeah, it's really humbling that when people have spent many years in training and in high positions in their home country and they come here and they have to start at the bottom. And so they and usually enter into like tech jobs if they have enough English in the field that they are in and then try to study for national boards or go back for whatever training is required for them to do their profession here in the United States. So I know one thing that you're looking for is people to get involved. If you have questions about the Lutheran Social Services Refugee Resettlement Program, give us a call at 549-2937 or email us at WJCT at First Coast Connect at WJCT.org, or you can reach out to us on social media. So Laura Cook, what are the main challenges that refugees face when they come to Jacksonville? And how does providing like a host family environment mitigate some of those challenges? Yeah, so they, uh, the individuals that come are very hardworking, but they've never been here before. They don't know the culture. They don't know the language, some of them, and they don't know our healthcare system and everything that, you know, entails being successful here in the United States. So having somebody in the community that walks alongside them, linking them to those resources, showing them how to navigate the different aspects of life, um, they are able to take that and run with that and be extremely successful and self-sufficient and become contributing members of our community. So that's what we're looking to do uh, as we start our new program, the Circle of Welcome. Uh, we are looking for small groups of people, six to 10 individuals coming together, being trained on how to mentor a family and walk alongside a newly arrived family for six months. And so you're asking people to come and, and sort of audition for the circle of welcome how do you screen people yeah so it's going to be a vetting process there'll be level two background screened um, and they'll be able to go to an informational session to kind of see what does this entail do i want to commit to this because it's a time commitment um, and these families are you know you're building these relationships uh, and it's really important for them to have a relationship that's going to last um, so we'll be doing vetting or the information sessions and then there'll be training on cultural competency um, and then all the things that they need to know how to navigate and how they can help them succeed. Do you think that there's people out there who maybe don't think they would be qualified for this and maybe would be an appropriate host uh, family? 
Yeah, everybody has strengths that they like, contribute to these families. And that's why like, six to 10 people, um, they all have different strengths. And I think that would really play to help that family succeed in their first few years in the United States. So to be clear, this is like a group that comes together and they share hosting responsibilities? Right. So sort of. They, um, it could be like a small group, maybe co-workers, neighbors. Um, it could be a, a small group from a church. Um, and so they would sit down with us and they're going to say, and we'll say, okay, these are all the things that have to happen the first 90 days to six months. What what are you able to do? So maybe they'll be like, oh, okay, I can help enroll them in school. I can help show them where to go to the grocery store or help uh, set up their apartment. And we'll kind of be like a relationship with LSS and them and making sure that all the services are done that will help them be integrated um, as fast as possible. But the host families, are they, are they living with these hosts or are they, or, I mean, are the, are the, the families, the refugee families staying with them or are they independently living? How does that work? Yeah, so we find apartments for them prior to them arriving in the United States because we have a one to five week notice of them arriving. Um, so that group will also help us set up that apartment for them and make it a homey environment, a welcoming environment. And they can even go to the airport with us when we pick up that family and their services will start from there. So Jacksonville has a really rich history of, you know, refugees, immigrants, generally speaking. Um, there's a lot of uh, Syrian people, mm -hmm. Lebanese people, Palestinian residents um, represented in our seats of power. We've had two mayors, uh, former general counsels, a state attorney, all of whom came from, you know, a diaspora that came and settled in in this region. And so how are, are, is the current profile of, of the refugees that you're seeing changing? Where are they pre predominantly originating from? And, and are those, are they being driven out by conflict? Yeah, so uh, last year, 30% of people that we served were Cuban and Haitians. Uh, and then our biggest nationalities were Ukrainian, Afghan, um, Congolese, Syrian, and Burmese. And so they all have some, are going through some kind of conflict abroad. Um, a lot of them had been waiting for a while to travel to the United States because of COVID. And then we had the Afghan refugee crisis. So a lot of people's cases were put on, uh, on standby while they waited until it was their turn to arrive. And so how do you help them cope? Obviously, that's a very tumultuous process, can be very traumatic, I would imagine, the circumstances that they've been in. So what services are available for them on that front? Yeah, a lot of services are available. They do have access to mental health counseling. Um, they're screened at Refugee Health Clinic downtown. Um, and we have their medical profile before they come. So we're able to pre-book appointments for them or get them into specialists that they need to see to help them um, with any physical or mental issues that they may be uh, experiencing. And how do you mitigate pressures and, and, you know, sometimes like a political environment that maybe is less welcoming to people who are immigrating to the United States? Yeah, so in our circumstances, I think a lot has to do with education. The individuals that we come are heavily vetted. They're the most vetted people um, that come to the United States. They have gone through a number of screenings, biodata screens. Um, and so I think that people don't understand that. And once they arrive, the United States is welcoming them here. Um, and so once they arrive in the United States, they step off that airplane, they have an employment authorization. Um, they're taxpaying the community members. Um, I think that a lot of that has to do just with education. And once people know why they're, why they're here, you know, they come, be, they don't want to leave their home. They're persecuted or have a well-founded fear of persecution. And that's their only option is to leave. And their only option is to come to another country like this, not just to like try to survive life, but to thrive. And I think when the community members really understand that, they have a lot more compassion and more welcoming. And these are people who really want to be here um, mm -hmm. and succeed here. Yes, they're very excited. Um, they're, they're anxious to get working. They're anxious to get their kids in school and just to get uh, some, some, some like normalcy to their life. So how can people get involved if they want to participate in this uh, circle of welcome? Yes, yeah, so you can go on to lssjax.org or they can email volunteers at lssjax.org to become a part of our circle of welcome. Uh, we are uh, now currently hiring for that position and we're going to launch the program in January. And so we're really excited and we think this is going to be a really great option, um, a really great add on for our clients. And I think that they're going to um, become more integrated into community through this. And how many people are you hoping to land in this in this drive? 
Uh, our first year, our target is 10 teams, uh, of 10 teams of 10 to 6 individuals, but I think we can do better than that. Really? Yeah. All I right. think about Jacksonville is a very welcoming community. I think once the word's out there, a lot of people will be interested in um, playing this important part of having an impact in these community members' lives. Well, Laura Cook uh, with Refugee Resettlement with Lutheran Social Services, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me.